This is um, the Tone Smart Thermostat. What else can you do on here? Can you play also, Sudoku? Uh, <laughs> no, no, nothing, uh, nothing that uh, complicated. Hey, it's Adam from Gizmodo. I'm here in Amsterdam with Tom Van Arman, who has a smart house in a smart city. That's right, Adam. Do you want to have a look? Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it. This. Imagine a future in which your energy didn't come from a power plant. It came from your neighbors and even your home. That's exactly what the Virtual Power Plant Project is trying to figure out. A living laboratory of some 50 households in Amsterdam is currently exploring the possibility of building ultra-efficient microgrids using sustainable energy sources. Tom Van Armen lives in one of the Virtual Power Plant homes, and so he and his family are part of the experiment. In here, Adam, is what we call the Metercast in Dutch, which is basically the technical closet for the smart home. Uh, we have security systems, we have the fuse boxes that are connected to the solar panels. All of the smart lights in our home are connected to this and we can control them either from the Philips app or on the tone itself. By 2050, they're trying to get away from uh, natural gas. Therefore, the smart meter is becoming a mandate now for all the households to have much more granular data. This fuse box here is then connected to the solar panels so that we can also see how much solar we're producing. Now we're going to see the heart of the home energy experiment, the battery. So this is the inverter, which is basically connected directly to the uh, smart meter uh, and also storing the energy here in the battery. The energy from your solar panels hit the inverter yeah. and send, send it to the meter and then send it to the battery. Yeah. Inside this um, shelf, it's basically a, like a high school locker, except it's full of batteries that are ultimately just storage uh, units calibrated to how much energy you produce per year. This is a graph right here about how this guy is performing on any given day, making sure that everybody else connected to this uh, virtual power plant initiative is basically topped off at the end of the day. So Adam, what you see here is the, uh, the, the Tone Smart Thermostat, and it's a little bit different from the Nest, as you may know, because it's connected directly to your um, billing uh, at the end of the month. Right now, I can have a look on how much I'm consuming in terms of my energy, but also my gas. If I'm the first one home, I will go to my Tone app, and then I will basically turn up the temperature, and then you'll see the set point change here, and that means that the boiler is turned on, but you have more and more control of how these devices are uh, working uh, for you and not against you. You can set all those kinds of uh, systems automated in the background. That's what some people call the intuitive home. Yes. Yeah. We can connect it to the smart plugs. We can control the power on, power off. Weather, obviously, traffic, smoke detectors. The products that we're actually using in our home were actually created by people like us, and that's important to, to my work. Getting much closer to what I always call the Jetsons future we were promised. Yeah. As a city, Amsterdam feels like a model for sustainable energy. Electric cars and solar panels are everywhere, in part because local organizations make it possible. I'm Simon Bushell, CEO of SimPower, and we're one of the companies involved in the Virtual Power Plant project. So there's a little under 50 households involved in the project that already have solar panels on their roof. And they're all located in the Neil Vest area of, of Amsterdam. So each household uh, gets a battery. We start charging and discharging it at the right moment of the day to get the best value out of the battery and the solar panels households can and will play a really important part in a future smart electricity system and that's why we take part in projects such as the virtual power plant project in which we investigate uh, how they can play that role and we start enabling households to play that role. What's really great for me to see about this project is how the, the people who are participating are really excited about what we're doing and what their solar panels can really uh, deliver for them. This is the first step to maybe energy independence at a household level or a neighbourhood level. There's learning about different strategies for trading the electricity to get the best business case for the households on the grid and how we can use batteries to create new value propositions. A microgrid is simply a local power grid that can operate without being connected to a larger grid. This means the system can be self-sustaining and highly efficient. Once you have your own microgrid, uh, not only are you energy independent as a community, but then you can start reinventing uh, ways of um, compensation and, and payments and tokens. And now they're building their own blockchain solution uh, based on the microgrid, so I can go to the bar and pay in kilowatts. Uh, and not euros. Security is one of those biggest issues and blockchain solves that problem uh, in terms of safe transactions that everybody knows that their data will be secure. In the future, when everybody does have solar panels, then we can start selling our energy and make little bits of profit from the sun. Every conversation I have goes back to the blockchain these days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>